All right, folks, now that we're all experts at changing variables, here's another really challenging problem that we can finally solve using a wonderful change of variables at the end. That's right, folks, it's time we are going to solve the Basel problem. You may recall hearing back in single variable calculus that the sum of 1 over n squared as n goes from 1 to infinity is pi squared over 6. Wow, what a cool result. This is so neat. And it's so difficult to show. There just really aren't any truly simple proofs of this. We're going to do a complicated proof step by step. Step one is in the naming of things. Let's give this sum a name. Let's call the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared zeta. I'm going to use this. Wow, what a symbol. I love zetas. They're so neat. This terminology comes from the zeta function in number theory. And believe me, this story goes deep. But for now, it's just a name. It's just a name. And using that, we can move to step two. Step two is the big idea. We're going to express this infinite series as an integral, as a double integral as the double integral of 1 over 1 minus xy, as x and y both go from 0 to 1. Now, this is not obvious. This, this is kind of a surprise. Where'd that come from? Well, let's not worry about that so much right now. Let's just do it. Let's prove that this is true, and we're going to do it by trying to evaluate this double integral. Now, the first step is my favorite. I love this. I'm going to take that quantity and say, oh, hello, the geometric series. It's been a while. 1 over 1 minus smiley is really the sum of smiley to the n as n goes from 0 to infinity. In this case, smiley is x times y. And now I'm going to integrate this series term by term. I'm going to add up the double integrals of quantity x, y to the n. Now you got to check that everything is absolutely convergent on the domain so that we can do term-wise integration, but trust me, that's right. It's going to work. And what do we have to do? We just have to do the integrals. What's the integral of x to the n? Well, it's x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. What's the integral of y to the n? It's y to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Evaluate both of these from 0 to 1, and I get the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over quantity n plus 1 squared, and that is... Wait a minute. That's not quite zeta. Oh. Oh, no, wait. This is okay. This is going to be equal to zeta if we re-index that. And instead of going from 0 to infinity, going from 1 to infinity, and then shifting that term down. Okay, great. Now that we have zeta expressed as a double integral, what do we do? Well, here's the plan. It's kind of complicated. The next step, step three, is going to be to expand on step two. I'm going to rewrite that double integral for zeta as uh, something new. I'm going to integrate 1 over 1 minus quantity xy squared. And we're going to find that integrating that gives 3 quarters zeta. This is going to use a change of variables, as is the really difficult one, which is actually evaluating that double integral, the integral of 1 over 1 minus quantity xy squared, and getting pi squared over 8. Now, what do all these steps mean? Well, it's a game plan, and I want to go over the plan carefully first. Assuming these steps, what do we do? We get that zeta is the double integral of 1 over 1 minus xy, x and y going from 0 to 1. Step 3 says that this is 4 thirds times the modified double integral, where that denominator has quantity xy squared in it. Then, applying step 4, doing that evaluation, we get that zeta is 4 thirds times pi squared over 8, and that is pi squared over 6. Goal! That's what we were looking for. Whew, wow, a lot of steps. Now, that's the plan. Now that we've got that in hand, let's do the hard work of verifying steps three and four, and then we're done.